Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and what we have got here today is the AutoCube iPlay 6T Lite. It is a budget 11-inch tablet from AutoCube that runs on Android 14 and I've been using it for more than a week. So here are my thoughts and review of this tablet. Now at this time of shooting, I still do not have the official price for this tablet in the Malaysian market just yet. But just in case this tablet is already available in your local marketplace, it should cost under 120 US dollars or in the Malaysian market, I expect it to cost under 550 ringgit or even lower. Now for the price that you're paying for this tablet, you're getting quite the value in terms of hardware, just like auto keeps any other devices. Now this is an 11 inch IPS display that is laminated, which means you do not get a gap between the glass and the screen, which is really nice. But despite this really nice screen size, you are not getting the highest resolution on an entry level tablet. This is a 1280 by 800 pixel resolution display, which means if you view it up close, you will definitely notice the pixels and all that. But if you put it far ahead and all that, you should be having a really good viewing experience despite that low resolution. Now, the tablet is actually built very well, aside from the fact that I do not like these thick bezels, but that's what you get on an entry-level hardware. The build quality is actually pretty decent. Now, look at this here. It might be just a boring gray color back right here, but it is a very solid plastic chassis that doesn't feel cheap at all, all right? Now, you do get a dual camera setup on the back here. This is a very nice camera array. So, of course, only one camera is usable. It is a 30 megapixel main camera, and that's assisted by a 2 megapixel AI lens or whatsoever, or what they would like to call it. And you even get an LED flash if you want to take photos in low light now there's an antenna band right here and yes this is a 4g lte tablet and it supports dual sim connectivity and this is where you insert the sim card which is right on top here there's a sim tray and right at the top you get two speakers on the top and another two speakers at the bottom so this is a quad speaker system you're getting on an entry level tablet that sounds pretty decent now unfortunately there is no 3.5 mm headphone jack to be found elsewhere on this tablet which is quite a shame but if you're already using bluetooth headphones there's really nothing to worry about and just in case if you would really really like to go wired all the cube is kind enough to provide this really nice usb-c headphones inside the box now, AutoCube has also provided some other accessories with the tablet, including this nice soft case that works very well with the tablet. You also get this external Bluetooth keyboard that you can connect with the tablet if you want to get more productive. And finally, this stylus that works pretty well with two different tips here for you to scribble or doodle on the tablet should you really need it. The AutoCube iPlay 60 Lite is powered by a Unisoc T606 processor made to 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, which the latter is expandable over a micro SD card on the second SIM slot. Now, this is a very standard entry-level configuration that you will find on most other tablets and smartphones. And if you're wondering how the performance of this tablet is, I have to say that it is pretty okay for the basic stuff that I'm doing right here. So I usually use this tablet for browsing Facebook and all that, and even do some basic web browsing. And I have to say that the performance works pretty fine. As you can see, I'm scrolling around the tablet, and as you can see, apps don't launch really fast. It takes a while to load up like even your emails and all that. But once everything is loaded up, it is actually pretty okay. It's really smooth. You can even do a split screen. Let me just try it out for you if I split a Gmail and maybe the next one I'll have Facebook. Look at this, it has a pretty good split screen support and I think it does it way better than some other tablets that I have used, all right? Now we are, we are trying to do another split screen again. Let's try to expand Facebook. And if we try to do a split screen once again, and I'm just gonna choose other apps. Look at this, there's a dock here, which I can choose the app that I want to split it into. Let's choose Disney Plus Hotstar. There you go, that's Disney Plus Hotstar on the left here and Gmail on the right. So you can definitely get a little bit more productive while you're working and watching movies at the same time. So let's just simply play a video and see how well it works, shall we? And we're gonna play, let's say, hmm, Flex Cop, for example. Play the first episode. And look at this, guys. It works well. It splits into the screen. It doesn't cover the whole display, which I think is actually really, really good. If you want to use this tablet for 
watching videos and doing some productivity tasks at the same time, I think this software is pretty optimized. Now, in terms of software updates, this is where the AutoCube iPlay 60 Lite doesn't do as well as other branded competitors because like all other AutoCube tablets, you are probably not going to get any major Android OS upgrades on this tablet. So once you have already got this tablet, at most, you'll probably get some security patches during the ownership, but you probably might not get another major OS upgrade to Android 15 or whatsoever because AutoCube has never committed to that. And this is the reason why you're actually paying so low for this tablet and you're definitely paying just for its hardware. Now, one of the things that AutoCube has promoted on the iPlay 60 Lite is that this is a white vine L1 certified device, which by all means, when we check through the DevCheck Pro app, it is indeed a white vine L1 certified device. However, if you switch back to Netflix right here, the maximum playback resolution that we are getting here is a standard definition resolution, while it still detects that it is an L3 device. So this is something that I believe AutoCube will need to work on with Netflix if they really want to market this as a Netflix HD device. Otherwise, there's simply just no way that you can enjoy HD quality Netflix right on this device right here. Now that you have seen how the tablet performs when it runs apps and all that, let's do a little bit of gaming right here to show you the graphics performance and how this chip in this tablet can handle, shall we? So we are in Asphalt 9 right now and let's do a race. All right, graphics looks pretty pixelated <laughs> by all means because of the entry level hardware. But yeah, it still works fine if you want to do some casual Asphalt 9 racing here and don't really care about graphics quality. That's actually not too bad. So we are talking about 25 FPS on this game right now. Now, I'm definitely not going to try Honkai Star Rail or even Genshin Impact on this tablet because by all means, I don't think this tablet can handle it, all right? All right, so this is definitely one of the most optimized Android games already, and it actually works well on the Unisoc T606 chip on this tablet. All right, I'm just gonna increase the speaker volume, and then you hear a lot of sounds. Right, so there you go. That's how the AutoCube iPlay 60 Lite performs in Asphalt 9, which I think is pretty acceptable for an entry level chip, and you can definitely do some gaming here, right? Battery life on this tablet is really decent. As you can see, my last fully charged session was on Saturday night and it got down to 26% as we are on Friday right now at 6.26 p.m. We have a total screen on time of two hours and 20 minutes. So as you can see, I'm just using this tablet really casually during the review period, all right? Now, if you are somehow a very heavy tablet user, expect to charge this tablet in about two or maybe three days, which I think is still very decent for an entry level tablet. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with what the AutoCube iPlay 60 Lite is able to offer. And considering this is an entry-level hardware, there's really nothing much that you can nitpick about. And it's just that I really do hope that AutoCube does give us a better screen right here. But still, this is a pretty nice display that you can't really get on some other similar price tablets because most of them would be giving a really small 8-inch screen with an even worse resolution. And they would probably give you a pretty crappy chipset that doesn't perform just as well as the Unisoc T606 chipset that is on this tablet. Right, so that's pretty much on my thoughts on the AutoCube iPlay 60 Lite. Let me know about yours in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos coming right up and I'll see you in the next one.